Hi, Tan here. So I just went out and got the Beta FPV Pavo Pico. It is a 2.0 inch Cinewhoop and this is the plug and play ELRS version. Now this video is going to serve as a walkthrough of whatever that I have to get this whole drone running. The physical setup of the Pavo Pico to mount the O3 air unit on, as well as a little bit of software configuration, updating my goggles, binding to the O3 air unit and all that. Now if you've come to this video only looking to bind the DJI O3 air unit to the V2 goggles, you can skip to this timestamp where I run through the activating of the O3 air unit, the updating of the goggles, as well as some WTF OS stuff at the end. Anyway, let's get on to the video. Now, this is the list of things that I bought for a bunch of batteries. The DJI O3 air unit, as well as a Pavo Pico. This is for viewing and controlling of the drone. It is a DJI Goggles V2, as well as the RadioMaster TX16S. And over here is some miscellaneous stuff, plier cutters, Phillips and minus screwdrivers, a little SD card to put into the O3 air unit, a 1.5mm hex screwdriver here. I have a pair of tweezers which will really help this process, a LiPo balance charger. So this is to charge the batteries that I bought. Now we start out with the Pavo Pico box, bag of screws and whatnot. It is a filter, bag of spare propellers, and of course the drone unit itself. Now attached to the unit on the flip side is a 450 milliamp hour 2S LiPo, two O3 air unit brackets since I bought the O3 air unit version. Now we put aside that and uh, let's look into the O3 air unit box. And this is what it comes with. Firstly, we don't need the JST pin. As you can see on the drone, we have the JST and that's meant to connect to the O3 air unit. Now the first step we need to take is to replace the antennas. So what you need to get is a plus screwdriver. The smaller the better. I'll loosen the two screws that are holding the antenna down. It reveals two MMCX connectors. Now take a pair of tweezers and remove the antennas gently. Lift it on the back side and pop it up. Now in your Pavo Pico box, you should find one of the plastics with two antennas. These are MMCX antennas, which you could snap on as so. I would push down one end with my tweezers and use my fingernail to pop in the other side. Now the antennas should cross like it spells an X. And of course, I'll screw in the bracket back into the air unit to keep the antennas protected. Now in the Pavo Pico box, I'll grab the bracket that's meant for the O3 air unit. I'll start out by pushing the antennas into the back of the bracket. Pull it out from the other side. And then I'll snap the bracket into the O3 air unit as so. And in this plastic in the box of the Pavo Pico, you should see a bunch of grommets as well as little, little screws. I'm gonna grab two of these little screws. And that is intended to hold the camera in place of the bracket. Screw it in on both sides towards the camera. And next from the same plastic, I'll get the grommets out. Now this grommet is supposed to fit between the frame to create some little suspension for the O3 air unit. So I would start by lining up the grommet at the holes of the carbon fiber and then use a pair of tweezers to push the head in. I'll just hold it down with my thumb and use the tweezer to squeeze it in. And now apply it for all four mounting holes. Now take this long pointy screw from the same back and screw it through the grommet from the bottom. And it will meet the O3 air unit on top. And once you've done that, you can plug in the JST from the Pavo Pico into the installed air unit. Now our plug and play drone would come with this Beta FPV branded 450 mAh 2S battery and it fits in the battery tray very snugly. But if you don't use the Beta FPV and use another brand like this Dotcom, odds are the battery tray will not be compatible. Now if we go to the Beta FPV listing for the Pavo Pico, their recommendation is to cut the bottom bits of the battery tray. And we'll do exactly that. So just line up your wire cutter against the walls of the battery tray and cut only the bottom section out. So now there's room to accommodate larger batteries, but there's no way to hold it in. So you need to add a LiPo strap into the holder. 
So I'll push this through the body and pull out the other end with a pair of tweezers and you can strap it accordingly. Now the smallest lipo strap that I have available with me is a 150mm by 10mm lipo strap and even that feels a little bit too long for the 2S battery. So I caved in and bought the Beta FPV 130 by 14 mm LiPo strap. Also, I printed these uh, battery feet for the quad so that it can land without damaging anything. I'll put a link of the STL in the description for you 3D printer owners out there. Alright, now for the fun part. Plugging into the computer and configuring software. Plug in the USB to the O3 Air unit and open DJI Assistant 2. The Consumer Drone series is what you're looking for. And if you haven't, just make an account and follow the pop-ups to get your device activated. Now we get into the DJI V2 goggles side of it. Now, if you've not rooted your goggles with WTF OS, I really recommend you do it first before updating because the rooting process can only happen in the 0608 version. And to those of you who don't know, WTF OS is analog like OSD onto your HD goggles. It opens up many opportunities, especially the radio controlled menu, where you could use your radio to kind of configure, pit tunes, enable, disable GPS settings and things like that. So getting back into the process, within the goggles, there are like a couple of modes that you can switch to, whether it is the DJI air unit mode, the DJI FPV mode, or the DJI O3 air unit mode. So if I were to plug into the computer immediately, I'll get this warning from the DJI Assistant to change it to DJI FPV mode. So in here, I'm going to click the select button once. I'll scroll down to settings, click select, and I'll scroll up one to go down to device. And over here, I have the DJI FPV mode, so I'll hit select. Okay. So I'll need to power cycle this goggle once. Plug out power, plug in power. Just hit OK. And right now you can see I'm in the DJI FPV mode. And this is when I can plug it in and start to update. So now I can just supply power to my DJI V2 goggles, plug it in via USB, and open DJI Assistant 2 Consumer Drone Series as well. I'll click into the goggles, and now it'll list the updates. I'll update to the latest version. And I'll let it run. And now that that's completed, I can move from DJI Air Unit Mode to the DJI O3 Air Unit Mode for binding. Click OK. So I'm going to click the Select button. I'm going to go down to Settings. And then I'm going to scroll down to About. And then I'm going to press Up to go to the last option, which is the option to change between the aircraft models. And instead of DJI FPV, I will go down to DJI O3 Air Unit. And now I'll power cycle once again. Plug out, plug in. So now it's for binding the goggle while it is in O3 mode. And I tend to use a 1.5mm hex screw to double click the bind button on the goggles. And as for the O3 Air Unit, it is on the flip side of the USB. Take a pair of tweezers and poke the bind button and it should blink red and turn green and once green your goggles are binded all good here additional notes for the wtf os guys before you go and reinstall wtf os after updating you should check out this video by mangoril he's saying that there are some itch cases where the vista mode and the o3 air unit mode has been experiencing binding loss when you switch between the two i'm gonna put the link down in the description as well as a hyperlink to the video over here so the instructions are as follows when you open the wtf osd you ignore the attempt fix over here and go down to the cli go to mango Reel video and look at the description copy the commands Go back to the WTF tab and paste it into the command line and hit OK. And this should cause your goggles to reboot. And once it reboots and connects, now you can click the attempt fix button. That should be a little bit different from the first time round. And once the fix is done, you can install WTF OS again.
and then you can go over to the package manager reactivate your 1200 watts your MSP OSD and once you've done that scroll down to the tweak fix bind loss and grab that as well it is described to fix bind losses when switching between O3 and air unit mode and so far I haven't experienced bind loss between switching modes and next is the configuration of my ELRS receiver. I'm going to grab the USB to JSD provided in the Pavo Pico box. I'll plug it into the rear of the drone and the USB into my computer. So I'll open ELRS configurator. I'll go down to target. On device category, I'm going to click beta FPV 2.4 GHz. While the device AIO receiver or RX. I'll be flashing via Wi-Fi. So I got my binding phrase set up and I'll leave everything as what it is and I'll hit build. So when the zip file pops up, be sure to click on this uh, white path of the file path and control C or copy this path. And on my computer, I'll use my Wi-Fi connect to connect to the ELRS hotspot Wi-Fi. And automatically the browser should pop up. I'm going to go over to update I'm going to choose my file. I'm going to click on the white space on the Explorer, paste the file path that I copied previously, and can hit enter, and then hit update. Now the key phrase is active on ELRS, and I'm just going to plug into test. This is my transmitter module. And just a quick arm test, and all looks okay. And I'm all done here. Thanks for watching.